Well, hello. I'd like to say good morning, but actually it's not. It's good evening because it's the only opportunity I have to record a service this week, and that's being perfectly honest. So let's just come together and remember that we are celebrating or getting ready to celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. So we greet each other with Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So welcome, welcome once more into my home. I hope we don't get too many into, into uh, interruptions, but we'll just have to wait and see. So let us pray. Father, we just come before you, thankful for Easter, thankful for Jesus, thankful for what we have. Open our hearts and our minds to find your encouragement and your peace. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We now have our first hymn. Let us pray. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sign of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Now let's call to mind our sins, the things we have done this week, or the things we may have said, or the things we may not have done, as we come before God to confess our sins. Jesus Christ, risen and reigning Lord, we come together before you to say sorry for things we have done or not done. For the times when we don't see you in our lives. Forgive us, Lord, and open our eyes for the times when we are too busy to acknowledge you. Forgive us, Lord, and open our eyes for the times we mistake you for someone else and make assumptions. Forgive us, Lord, and open our eyes. Lord, we pray that now we will let, up, let go of our concerns and concentrate on you. Fill us, we pray, with hope and expectation. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we have the glory. I know you haven't got the words, but you more likely can remember it, so try it. Have a go. We can't sing. <laughs> so, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. To put this reading into context, Peter and John have just healed a lame beggar. And everyone who saw it was amazed and is rushing towards them to see how they did it. Acts chapter 3, verse 12 to 19. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. And you handed him over to be killed. And you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life. But God raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man, whom you see and know, was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you're able to stand or if you're willing to stand at home, just, it would be good if you could just stand for the Gospel reading. Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. 
Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Father, we listen to your words today. We ask for understanding. We ask for that understanding that Jesus promised. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please sit down. Now, I went to the hairdressers today. I'm not showing off, but I did. Well, you've never seen anything like it before I went. And when I walked into the hairdresser, she looked at me twice and she said, I've never seen your hair that long. I wasn't sure it was you when you came through the door. So when we went on a bit longer, we decided that seeing was believing and it was me. So we can easily get confused with who people are. And now we have the disciples. The beginning of this reading is a bit confusing he said while they were talking about this so if we just go back a bit last week's reading we had from mark and the version from mark is obviously given to him by peter and the version was that they were in the in, in the, the 11 were in the room in an upper room no there were 10 actually in an upper room because that's because um thomas wasn't there so there were 10 in the upper room and Jesus appeared to them. And then Jesus showed them his hands and his feet and appeared to them. And then Jesus went. And then, somewhere on that first Sunday also, a couple of their numbers, which weren't in the, fir in the, in the first 12, went and were on the road to Emmaus, walking and talking about the awful things that happened and about Jesus' death. And Jesus appeared, as we know. Jesus walked with them and worked with them and went into the hotel or wherever they were stopped at, went in and shared bread with them. And he broke the bread and then they realised who he was and then he was gone. And there's a lot of seeing and believing. So they were obviously now, in this reading, they were back in the room again. These, these two that had seen... Jesus on the road to Emmaus, they were back in there as well, and they were talking about what they'd seen. And they must have discussed that this must have been a ghost. What else would you think? If you saw somebody risen from the dead in those days, well, even today, you might think that they were ghosts. So there they are, and Jesus walks into the room again, through the locked doors, through everything else, and he says, peace be with you. And they were frightened because they thought he was a ghost. And he said, why are you frightened? Have you now got doubts? Have you got doubts that I am risen from the dead? Look at my hands and my feet. It is me. It is myself. Touch me. A 
ghost, the ghost does not have flesh and blood. Then he showed him his hands and his feet. Then he asked him for something to eat, because again, a ghost doesn't eat. And then it goes on. But let's go back to what he was saying, because we are discussing again, or we can end up discussing what we discussed last week about faith, about believing, about believing when we haven't seen. We could go back into that because that did, that Luke reading is very similar to Mark's reading, just different accounts of the same occasion. So that's just that bit different. But let's actually concentrate on this. Peace be with you. We once had a priest in this area. His name was Michael Council. He'd been a priest in many places. And he wrote what we call the Preacher's Companions. It's for when you're stuck on what to preach. So tonight I thought, oh gosh, this is, this is coming home to me too much like last week's and I'm going to keep dropping back into last week's because I preached last week. So I thought, let's see what Michael says. And the heading for his sermon was, No Peace in This Church. And he talks about passing the peace, how we have become used to passing the peace during our Sunday worship. That the priest or the minister or whoever's conducting the service will read a verse of scripture and that something that Jesus said. And then he will say, and the peace of the Lord be with you. And we will always reply, and also with you. And then we share the peace. We turn around, well, today we can't turn around. Last week we had to nod at each other, the, the church that I, I worship at. So we had a little wave at each other, but we can't actually um, shake hands. But obviously not when this, this sermon was written. So we greet each other with a sign of the peace. But then the big question is, are we at peace? Are we at peace with one another? Are we at peace because our church is open and maybe they shouldn't be or we think they are? And now we're not going to go anyway. Are we at peace because at last we can see each other and be with each other and we can actually worship in a place where we always worship? Because worshiping anywhere else is not quite the same as church as as worshiping a church. So we are starting to worship. We can't sing yet, but then we did on Easter Sunday, we went outside and sang outside. But officially we can't sing inside, but it's getting there. We're getting there. Hope's coming. There's lots of hope that we can actually do that and get on with it. And realise and recognise that Jesus stands there amongst us. Although Jesus is everywhere, there just seems to be that bit of special when we're in church and we're all of the same mind. Declaring our faith, promising to serve, promising to love one another. How long the promise lasts is another thing. And promising the peace and offering the peace to each other. Have we still got that peace amongst us by the time we go out? Have we? I don't know. Michael says in his sermon, believe because we go to church, we know that the hand of Jesus is raised over us in blessing that he will keep our hearts on an even keel. But he also recognises that we're not always too keen on this, and this giving each other the peace, and people find it very confusing, especially new people coming in. And we've been doing it a few years now, but it took us quite a while when we first started. We're not always very keen, even if there's no COVID about making physical contact with each other. It's not quite what we do. Sometimes we back out the way or we keep our heads down, or we sit down and ignore it altogether and hope somebody doesn't come diving over to give us the peace. We need to respect each other, and if people want to keep themselves themselves, they do. At the moment, we've got quite a good excuse. We can't share each other, we can't touch each other, and we can still see a service if we're at home. But I just ask you, is it the same at home? Personally, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's worth donning that mask, grabbing that bottle of sanitizer and getting yourself into the community and back in together 
can't sit and chat together, but at least we can wave to each other during the peace. At least we can feel each other's company. And that is what we're missing at this moment with COVID. We are missing that. Now there's a bit of a funny story in here, which, which Michael was very good at putting funny stories in. So I'll just read this to you. There was a visiting clergyman who was taking a service in a country church where the patron of the living was a peer. They were using one of the modern revised services, but one which had been superseded and was already illegal. We have to be so careful with services and if it's not in the Church of England liturgy, don't use it. So the minister was surprised when his lordship came over to him afterwards and said very angrily to this minister, you've ruined our dear old service. Oh dear, said the visitor. What did I do? You passed the peace, said the peer. There is no peace in our church. Because what he meant was we don't pass the peace in our church. But what he said was there is no peace in our church. You have to feel sorry, Michael says, for people who are so resistant to any sort of change in their worship. Because that was the problem. Not everybody changed to pass in the peace at that time. We've all got our quirks. Everything goes on and changes and we don't like change and then change comes and then we don't like it if we try to go back. There's no way you can you can carry on with that. And as Michael said, his lordship was obviously unaware that the words would suggest to most people that the people who went to that church were constantly arguing and quarrelling because he had said there's no peace in our church. So how careful we have to be also about what we say. When we talk about people, we need to be careful. We may not mean to be malicious or, or degrading these people, but we do because we've said something very silly, something wrong. Even, you know, just silly things, oh, I can't get on with her or what have you. We need to think. We need to think about what we give. And when we give the peace, that is what we're giving. We're not giving another argument or thinking deep down, I don't like him or her. That's not the point. The point is, we are there to bring God's peace to everybody. So we are just think that just to think that that, that Lord, who, who was the Lord of the manor, said there's no peace in our church. He didn't mean to say there wasn't any peace in their church, but they weren't having a share in the peace. So there we are. That's how it goes. And Michael did suggest in this sermon that there's a special prayer written by Eric Milner White, who was once dean of King's College, Cambridge. And maybe it's something we need to think on today. And the words go like this. O oh God, who wouldest fold both heaven and earth in a single piece, let the design of thy great love lighten up the waste of our wraths and sorrows and give peace to thy church, peace among nations, peace in our dwellings and peace in our hearts through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. That may be something you might like to think about if you're Zooming or WhatsApping or talking to friends and neighbours in the week or people you come to church with, you might like to think about the peace in your church. Is there peace in your church? Why is it you're not open? Why is it you're not welcoming people in? Because you're not, if the doors are shut. There is no real reason now to not have your doors open. Yes, somebody's got to do the sterilising. Yes, somebody's got to do the greeting. Yes, somebody's has to put notices on, don't sit here and sit two or three. You sit that end and you sit this end. And yes, somebody really has a very hard job of saying, sorry, we can't let any more in. And that's a hard one too. But we need to think that together we are one people. And there's always that saying that if we are separated, we fail. Together we achieve. Separated, we fail. We don't want to fail. We want to welcome people into our churches. We want to still carry on doing things, maybe online, 
so that people can see what an actual series is like. But at the moment, we're just seeing a make-believe. So let's think about that this way. Amen. So now let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The bidding and response will be, Lord, we seek you. Guide us with your light. God of our lives, we thank you for your presence. Your Holy Spirit guides us, nourishes our souls and gives us knowledge of your perfect love. We try hard to be obedient and to listen to you, Lord. But we know that sometimes we fall short. We pray for those whom we have judged, those who we have made assumptions about, those who we have stereotyped, ignored or underestimated. Give us an opportunity to change how we interact with these people. Forgive us for our judgmental nature. The people who have been negatively affected by our actions do not deserve it. It can be uncomfortable to admit when we have done something that we should not have done when our words, actions and deeds are not performed with love and in Jesus' name. Help us all to be present with this discomfort, to acknowledge it, to use it as fuel to change the things that we can. In the silence, we bring before you the names of those who need our love and acceptance despite our struggles to give it and your love and acceptance. We pray that your Holy Spirit works through us for them. Lord, we seek you. Guide us with your light. The death of His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, has understandably left an enormous void in the royal family. We pray for the Queen, who is grieving for her husband of over seven decades. May she know your comfort, but rest in the knowledge that Prince Philip is with you and that he is at peace. When we lose someone that we love, that grief never goes away. 
We pray for all those who are grieving, not just for the death of a loved one, but also for the end of a relationship, for a life they once had but don't have any more, the loss of a home, the loss of a job, or simply the yearning for life as it was before Covid. Lord, we seek you. Guide us with your light. All over the world, people are in pain, Lord. People are suffering. There is inequality and discrimination. People make assumptions about women who dress or act a certain way, about men who cry, about people with black skin, about those who claim benefits, those of a different religion, those from another country, as well as many other groups too numerous to mention, but you know them all, Lord. Jesus taught us simply that we should love people despite their backgrounds or situation. We pray for every single person across the world who is experiencing discrimination or who has experienced discrimination. Those who have fallen foul to the effects of racist, homophobic, patriarchal systems. They need you, God. They need your strength. They need the Holy Spirit to lift them up and remind them that they are perfect as they are because they are made in your image. We pray for an end to those systems that are by their very nature designed to further the interests of one group of people over another. For we are all one in Christ Jesus. Lord, we seek you. Guide us with your light. We pray for the leaders of our country and church. They are under an enormous amount of pressure at the moment, Lord. They need your wisdom to make decisions for the good of us all. We might not always agree with what they say or with the decisions that they make. So help those of us lucky enough to live in a democratic society, to use our voices, our talents and our votes to enact the change that we seek. Lord, we seek you. Guide us with your light. Lord, the most heartbreaking and anti-Christian elements of society is the divide between rich and poor. People accept this as the norm, like having rich and poor is the normal thing to have. Jesus himself said that a rich person has less chance of getting into heaven than a camel has of getting through the eye of a needle. We pray for those of privilege, those with enormous wealth. Give them the wisdom and the compassion to share what they have. We pray for those in poverty, those who have to ask for help to feed their families, those who don't even have a roof over their heads. Give them comfort and hope. And we pray for a future for them without worry, without a feeling of vulnerability and without judgment. Lord, we seek you. Guide us with your light. Lord, we pray for the people in our lives who love us. Those who stand up for us. Who care for us. The ones that make sure we are okay. 
who call us for a chat, who bring us food, who pray for us and with us. May they know the happiness and pure joy that it is to be doing your work and to be embraced by the Holy Spirit. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now as we think once more about that giving of the peace, we can't see each other, but you can at least see me. And Alleluia, the peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Alleluia. Now we have a hymn. Jesus, be the centre, be my source, be my light, Jesus. Jesus, be the centre, be my hope, be my song, Jesus, be the fire in my heart, be the wind in these sails, be the reason that I live, Jesus, 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 be my vision. Be my path, be my guide, Jesus. Be the fire in my heart, be the wind in these sails, be the reason that I live, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, be the centre, be my source, be my light, Jesus. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made perfect for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all, as we proclaim his death, and celebrate his rising the blood celebrate his rising in glory for us let this bread and wine be the body and blood of your dear son and as we eat and drink these holy gifts 
make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise, and lift our voices to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Let us keep the feast. Alleluia! living God. Your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. We now have our final hymn.
And now we pray for our royal family and for Prince Philip. God of our lives, we give thanks for the life of Prince Philip, for the love he shared among us and for his devotion to duty. We entrust him now to your love and mercy through our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Merciful God, be close to all who mourn, especially the Queen and all members of the royal family. May they know the hope of your promises and the comfort of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, alleluia, alleluia.